Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, we delve into Gerald Solent's video, which sheds light on the current state of the global economy and predicts an impending crisis. Solent highlights the recent downturn in the markets and attributes it to lower than expected job numbers. He emphasizes that the effects of high interest rates take time to permeate the economy, and now is the time for these effects to manifest. With the looming threat of rising interest rates, both in the United States and in Europe, coupled with Germany's recession, Solent foresees significant market declines starting in September and continuing into October. Moreover, he draws attention to a significant increase in Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings and the office building bust, issues he has been forecasting for years. Solent challenges mainstream narratives and offers insights into the economic trends that many fail to acknowledge. Solent discusses the alarming surge in Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings, which have skyrocketed by 68% in the first half of 2023. He attributes this development to the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, a factor that receives insufficient attention from the mainstream media. Additionally, he predicts a banking crisis on the horizon, focusing on the commercial real estate sector burdened by over $20 trillion in debt. As interest rates rise, loans become more expensive, and the subsequent lack of tenants makes it increasingly difficult for landlords to meet their obligations. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Well, today, the markets went down again after the big down yesterday. Yep, the job numbers came out and they weren't as high as expected. So get it straight. As we said, it takes time for the high interest rates to move through the economy. And we said that time is now. The job numbers in the summer should be going up. It's summertime and the living is easy. You spread your wings and you make for the sky. No, no don't sing like that. Do a bad rap. Do a bad rap. Do the bad rap. That beat everywhere I go. Boom, 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 boom. All the jive is gone. All the jive is gone. Yep, everybody is just a bunch of tight shits. And that's who we swallow our crap from, but not the people listening to Trends in the News. The Fed's going to raise interest rates according to what they're saying. Two more times. The economy can't take it. The ECB is going to raise interest rates. They're already in a recession in Germany. The whole, everything's going down. Again, there's going to be a leveling off in the summer because people are traveling and it's a different type. But as we said, the big decline is going to start happening in September into October. U.S. Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings jumped 68% in the first half of 2023. Blow me the f*** away. Never would have known it. Thanks to the COVID war. But nobody talks about that. And again, we do. You ready? Office building bust, the first to call it, going back to when the scumbag pricks, mostly pricks, locked down the f country. And I can't say the other word. This is gone, man. And that's going to be the banking bust. Your office building bust. We've been writing about it for three years. Now it's making the news, but hardly in the hard sense, because here are some of the headlines. Commercial sector turmoil, Royals ground leases talk. In the first quarter of 2023, investors purchased only $489 million of Manhattan office properties compared to 5 billion in the first quarter of 2022, according to MSCI Real Assets. Why the f you buy them in 2022? How stupid could you be? I'll tell you why, because you don't subscribe to the Trends Journal and you're just a member of the shithouse club. What else? The average acre of land, you ready for this? In Manhattan sold for $67.7 million so far this year. $67.7 million, there's no inflation. God, what a f joke. But you ready? down nearly 60% from the same period last year. 
The office building bust represents a crucial component of this crisis, and Solent points to headlines highlighting the turmoil in the commercial sector. He cites a significant decline in the purchase of Manhattan office properties, with only $489 million invested in the first quarter of 2023, compared to $5 billion during the same period the previous year. These figures demonstrate a stark reduction in investor confidence and reflect the profound impact of the pandemic on office space demand. The rise of remote work further exacerbates the challenges faced by the commercial real estate market. Selleth mentions a Wall Street Journal report indicating that 51% of U.S. companies are opting for hybrid work arrangements. This trend has prompted businesses to downsize their office space requirements, leading to a negative ripple effect throughout sectors dependent on office-based foot traffic. Small businesses relying on commuters and businesses that cater to office workers are particularly vulnerable, as evidenced by their struggles during the pandemic-induced lockdowns. Remote work persists not just for white-collar jobs. Wall Street Journal. Yep, office building bust. Chief financial officers weigh the various issues of return to the office. So far, 51% of U.S. companies are opting for some kind of hybrid work arrangement, according to a report covering more than 4,000 companies by the software company Scoop. The share of people in the office on the so-called structured hybrid work arrangements, which requires workers in the office a set number of days, increased to 30% in the second quarter of this year. Ah, ready for more? Office market remote work woes spread. Many businesses that depended on sectors are having to pivot, shrink, or worse, like go out of business. We warned this would happen. The banking crisis has just begun. In the whole commercial real estate sector, there's over $20 trillion in debt. And again, as the interest rates go up, a lot of these loans cost more and you have less tenants and you can't pay it. The brunt of the impact so far has been mostly felt by office landlords and their lenders. No shit. Buried down at the bottom. Their lenders. Why don't you say the f banks? And it's mostly small and medium sized banks. But don't worry. Hey. Jamie Dimon will get bigger, you know, the gold, JP Morgan Chase and all the others, they'll buy up everybody with our money. Don't worry about it. Oh, and what else? As well as small businesses that depend on commuters. Blow me the f away. Never would have known this. We forecast this three, more than three years ago, March 2020. It's in your trends journal. World's richest, they had $825 billion to their fortunes in the first half of 2023. I'm really happy for you guys, man. Because you don't give a f penny for peace. Not a penny for peace. No? Hey, but you're getting richer as the plantation workers of Slavelandia get poorer. Man Group moves into private credit markets. Another one, 130 buying up something. Buyout Group takes control of wordplay for $18.5 billion deal. Generali snaps up asset manager conning here for another con game. Again, the bigs are getting bigger. Everybody else is getting smaller. There's no mom and pop businesses anymore. Every, the whole thing's taken over. Nearly three quarters of millennials are living paycheck to paycheck. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't f off. Don't worry about it because the billionaires just got uh, 820, $52 billion richer. Sullent argues that the consolidation of wealth is another disconcerting consequence of the current economic climate. While billionaires continue to amass tremendous fortunes, millions of people live paycheck to paycheck. He highlights the staggering statistic that nearly three quarters of millennials fall into this category. The rapid growth of billionaires' wealth as reported by Bloomberg, reinforces the growing wealth disparity and systemic issues plaguing society. Solent criticizes the priorities of those in power, questioning their commitment to peace while they amass immense wealth. The video also touches on the arms trade, 
shedding light on controversial decisions made by the White House. Summit draws attention to the transfer of cluster bombs to Ukraine, a move approved by U.S. President Joe Biden as part of the Pentagon's arms package. The use of cluster bombs is widely condemned, with over 120 countries banning them due to their potential to harm civilians through unexploded ordnance. Selent expresses his concern and condemnation, questioning the morality of such actions and highlighting the broader theme of aggression and military intervention prevalent in American foreign policy. Uh, this is a Bloomberg. Each member of the Bloomberg Billionaires Index made on average over $14 million per day over the last six months. 47% of the world's population, $6.25 a day. Utterly disordered and mismanaged situation. A muddled mess. A muddled mess brought to you by the murderous people that are running our government. As the economy is going down, as people can't, are living paycheck to paycheck, bloodying the killing fields from a guy that loved every f war. And look at this little f scumbag up your ass, Lindsey Graham. A little f warmongering fat slob. One little f freak after another with your masks. I remember that. Oh, there's Lloyd Austin. Oh, what was he? Oh, um... I know what he was. He was formerly sitting on the board of directors of Raytheon, the second largest defense contractor before becoming America's secretary of state. Yep. So here's the story. White House transfers cluster bombs to Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden is green-lighted to supply cluster munitions to Ukraine as part of the Pentagon's 42nd arms package to Kiev. Quote, this is that other little piece of arrogant shit. He looks like George Goebbels' grandson, that Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor. I'm a national security advisor. He said, U.S. officials recognize that cluster munitions create a risk to civilian harm from unexploded ordinance. This is why we deterred the decision for as long as we could. But now he goes that, uh, he's arguing that much of additional, of an addition of civil civilian harm, Russia has caused, that's why we're sending them. So cluster bombs are banned by more than 120 countries. The Red Cross said today, their use must be condemned. F you, F off. We don't care. We're murderers and thieves. By our deeds, you shall know us. We are America. What's your favorite war? Well, I grew up during the Vietnam War. Hey, how about the two Iraq wars? Well, I like the Afghan war. How about the Yemen war? We won't talk about that. Nobody does. I want that guy Gaddafi out of there. I want Assad out of there. Oh, yeah. Oh, those dirty Russians. Yep. Cluster bombs.